Okay, I'm giving my room a little bit of a tidy here because, well, you can see it's in quite a bad state. Stuff everywhere. Don't know if you can hear me over the two fans I've got going. Got one up over here by the window, trying to keep the, trying to keep the room cool, and this one here, blowing into my computer, trying to keep that cool. They seem to be doing their job, but they're a bit noisy. And anyway, I keep getting a shock off my stuff here. Now this wire I'm holding right now. If I was to connect that to the back of my tape recorder here, I've got to tidy up in here as well. Excuse me a minute. Right. And if I connect that into there, although that will work, there is a Hang on, I'll just turn this light out. I better not turn the light out. Now, although that works, there is quite a high voltage between the negative terminal on the connectors and the sockets. And I think the reason for that is because all this stuff here is wired up to a plug that goes behind those cabinets there. And the computer and everything over here is wired to a plug behind my bed. So there's two separate, connected by two separate earths. Now I've got the meter connected up to the tape recorder. One of the test leads connected up to the tape recorder. Now these are the leads, the wires that are connected up to the TV, up to its headphone output. Now I'll put that onto there. And turn on the meter. And you can see it's reading almost 120 volts. Well, it's not reading anything at all now because the thing has slipped off. So there is quite a high voltage, quite a high leak voltage. So this is my solution to stop it. I'm going to connect everything to a single ground. I'm even going to connect the earths on the two sockets together. I'm not going to take the, two, the sockets apart, obviously, but I will connect the earths on them together. Now, starting from this tape recorder here, which I pretty much tidied up the electronics inside. You can see there's a wire coming off it, coming off the, um, the ground on it. And I'll just get some of these cables out of the way so I can show you. It's connected to the ground on my phono preamp. It's also connected to the ground on these two cassette tape recorders. You may be able to see. And the other end of the wire is right here. Now the, the bed is earth to the socket that's under it. And connected my computer to the bed, so they're earth. There's also a power supply, the output of a power supply, which I have connected the ground to on the bed. I'm also going to wire everything here up, wire all the earths up on everything in here. And hopefully I should stop getting shocks off everything when I touch two wires that are connected to two separate earths. So that's what I'm going to do now. And I've probably coming up to the 10 minute limit because there seems to be some kind of um, warp in the fabric of space-time whenever I talk and the time just seems to go twice as fast when I talk so well I'm just gonna go now I've now connected a wire from the um, bedpost to here this is where the wire ends it's not actually connected to the speaker, it's just resting in there. If you remember, the bed is connected to the socket, um, to the earth on the socket. I also have the meter connected to the other wire, which, if you remember, is connected to the ground on all of these tape recorders. And they are connected to a socket that's behind 
the cabinets there. So I'm going to take the other test lead of the meter. It's a bit difficult to do this one-handed. And connect, connect them up there. And yes, still reading a higher voltage. It's dropped a little bit, but it does tend to fluctuate. And yes, I am holding it, and it is. 118 volts, but I'm not feeling anything because I'm only holding on to one of the wires. So instead of the current going through me, it's going through the wire instead. So connecting these two wires together will stop me getting electric shocks from, you know, touching the two separately earthed things 